morning and welcome to another session of Daily Jesus. And today we continue through the book of Genesis. Today we're going to read from chapters 5 to 8. Genesis 5 begins with the genealogy that leads to Noah. Then in chapters 6 to 8 details that sin and wickedness and corruption has grown in all over humankind, all over the land. Sin has entered the world that God has created through the sin of Adam. The effects of this sin was great. The people were corrupt now, and sin has taken over the land. Every inclination and intention of man's heart is now filled with evil. In response to this, God decides to judge the world. However, there was but one family who were an exception, Noah and his family. Noah was counted righteous before God, and God forewarns Noah about an impending judgment. God instructs Noah to build an ark to house the animals in their own kinds, including his own family. And when the ark was complete, God judges the world with water. And when the great flood ensued, after the great flood ensued for 40 days, and as the rain ceased and the water receded, the ark rested upon Mount Ararat. Upon exiting the ark, Noah and his family build an altar and offer a burnt sacrifice to God. And this is the story that we're about to read today. So keeping all this in mind, please open your chapters to Genesis 5. Genesis chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created men, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them and named them men when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness, after his image, and named him Seth. The days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he fathered Enosh. Seth lived after he fathered Enosh in 807 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he fathered Canaan. Enosh lived after he fathered Canaan 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. When Canaan had lived 70 years, he fathered Mahalalel. Canaan lived after he fathered Mahalalel 840 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he fathered Jared. Mahalalel lived after he fathered Jared 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. When Jared had lived 162 years, he fathered Enoch. Jared lived after he fathered Enoch 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he fathered Lamech. Methuselah lived after he fathered Lamech 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. Lamech lived after he fathered Noah, 595 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus all of the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. After Noah was 500 years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Chapter 6 When men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in men forever, for he is flesh, his days shall be hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men, who were of old, the men of renown. 
The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made men on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out men whom I have created from the face of the land, men and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every sort shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every sort of food that is eaten, and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did that all God commanded him. Chapter 7 Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of the waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah, as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days in the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the same day Noah and his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark, and they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him and the Lord shut them in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, men and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. 
they were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth hundred and fifty days. Chapter eight. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens were restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of hundred and fifty days, the waters had abated, and in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, and the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark. That he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, "Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth." So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing. And every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out by families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, "I will never again curse the ground because of men, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done." While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, I'll give you some application questions that will help you meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, how did God react to the world, which was now filled with evilness and wickedness? What can we learn from this about our own sins and wickedness, and of God? Secondly. What was the reason why Noah was not judged? What does this tell us about our own salvation today? Thirdly, Noah is obedient to the commands of God. What is something that God is calling you to be obedient to today? And as always, finally, how is the passage today leading you to a moment of conviction and repentance? Meditating on these questions, let's all conclude today's session with a prayer. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through the flood and through your judgment in Genesis, you've shown us your wrath and anger toward our sin. Father, we、uh, recognize and confess this moment that we are no different to those who were judged with the flood. Father, we pray that、um, as descendants of Noah, that who you counted righteous,、uh, Father, you count as right us as righteous in Christ Jesus. Father, enable us to take faith and hope in Christ Jesus, in order that we may be able to be obedient to your commands and to your wills. For you have spoken in Scripture that if you love me, you will follow my commandments. Enable us to do so, and allow us to be content and、um, in, uh, overjoyed by the fact that we now share fellowship with you. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do hope and pray that today you are able to be obedient to the commands of God and listening out to where He leads you. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people.